This video will be an note for note breakdown of the guitar solo. The supporting rhythm guitar and bass parts will only be given a quick once through near the end of the video. A tab sheet for each part will briefly be displayed near the end of its respective segment. A final demo of all parts combined will close out the video. The tuning used in this video and on the record is standard E and 440 wavelength calibration. The solo is going to be 18 measures long. The first measure is actually going to be a fill leading into the solo that appears at the end of the second chorus. We'll begin by placing the first finger on the A string at the ninth fret. This fill is going to be a full measure long using straight eighth notes and alternate picking. We'll pick this note down on one, and the end beat after one, we'll put the pinky on that same string at the twelfth fret and pick that up. And two, we're going to go with that first finger to the D string on the ninth fret and pick that down. On the end beat after two, the middle finger goes to that same string at the 10th fret, picked up. On the three beat, the third finger goes to the 11th fret on that same string, picked down. On the end beat after three, we're going to shift down a step and pitch on the neck and go to the G string with that first finger. We're going to pick that up on that end beat after three. On four, the middle finger goes to the same string at the 8th fret, picked down. And to finish up the first measure, the third finger is going to go to that same string at the 9th fret, picked up. So with a 4 count lead in, this is what the first measure is going to sound like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And now we've reached the second measure. We're going to begin by placing the third finger on the high E string at the 12th fret. On one, we're going to pick this note down and bend it up a full step and pitch as we do it. We're going to let this ring out for three eighths of the measure. What this is, is a dotted quarter note. On the and beat after two, we're going to go back to the natural position of the note. Okay, we're not going to let the note sustain out as we release that bend. We're just going back to the natural position of the note. We'll pick this up and bend it again a full step and pitch. This time it's going to ring out as a quarter note. On the and beat after three, we're going to go back to the natural position of the note again and pick this up. It's going to ring out as an eighth note. And on four, we'll pick this note one more time, down this time, and bend it up for the rest of the measure, or in this case, a quarter note. So with the four count lead in, this is what the second measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. And now we've reached the third measure. The third finger should still be on the high E string at the 12th fret. We're going to play this note one more time by picking it down on one and bending it up a full step and pitch as we do it. It's going to ring out as a quarter note. On two, we're going to shift up with that third finger on the same string to the 17th fret. We'll pick this down and bend this note up a full step and pitch as we do it. This rings out as a quarter note. On three, we're going to go back to the natural position of the note and pick it down. This rings out as a quarter note. On four, we're going to pick that same note one more time down but this time it only rings out as an eighth note. And to finish up the measure on the and beat after four, the last eighth note of the measure, we're going to go with that first finger to the same string at the 14th fret and pick that note upwards. So with the four count lead in, this is what the third measure will sound like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and This is what the first three measures in sequence are going to sound like. I'm not going to count out as I play, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And now we have reached the fourth measure. The first finger should still be on the high E string at the 14th fret. What we'll do now is take that first finger and shift up a step and a half in pitch on the 
fretboard to the 17th fret and we'll bar both the B and high E strings with that finger. What we're going to do here to start out the fourth measure is play two 16th notes on the high E string at this position, count of one E, pick down and up, followed by two 32nd notes on the B string, and that will be with the third finger going to the 19th fret, we'll pick that down and pull off to the first finger. 32nd notes are too fast to count, and I'm not sure how to count them anyways. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you what the first quarter will sound like, just like this. We're going to repeat that three more times. But what we're going to do for the rest of the measure is we're going to add the middle finger at the end of that sequence to the G string at the 18th fret. We'll pick that up. So this is what the second quarter will sound like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a four count lead in and I'm just going to play the fourth measure. Remember I won't be counting this aloud. One, two, three, four. And now we've reached the fifth measure. The first finger should still be barring the B and high E strings at the 17th fret. For the first quarter of this measure, we're going to repeat the sequence that we did in the last measure. So on two, what we'll do is place the middle finger on the G string at the 16th fret and the third finger on the B string at the 17th fret. We'll pick this double stop down and bend these notes up a full step and pitch as we do it. On the and beat right after two, we're going to let these notes sustain out as we release the bend back to the natural position of the notes. And this will ring out for the rest of the measure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a four count lead in and play the fourth and fifth measures in sequence. Keep in mind that I won't be counting aloud and also this is being played at a slower pace than you'll hear it on the album. One, two, three, four. And now we've reached the sixth measure. The middle finger should still be on the G string at the 16th fret, and the third finger should still be on the B string at the 17th fret. On one, we'll pick this double stop downwards and bend both notes up a full step and pitch as we do it. On two, we're going to go back to the natural position of the notes. We're not going to release the bend and let it sustain out as we go back to those notes. We're just going back to them. We'll pick them down and this will ring out as a half note through the two and three beats. On four, we're going to go with that first finger to the 14th fret and bar the G and B strings. We'll pick this down. This rings out as a 16th note. On the E beat, which is the 16th after four, we're going to go with that third finger to the D string at the 16th fret and pick that note up. This rings out as a 16th note. And on the and beat, to finish up the measure, we're going to go with the first finger back to the G and B strings at the 14th fret and pick this double stop down. This will actually be tied to an eighth note to start out the next measure. So with the four count lead in, this is what the sixth measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, E, and. And now we've reached the seventh measure. The first finger should still be barring the G and B strings at the 14th fret. This double stop should be sustaining out from the last measure and will ring out for the first eighth of this measure. So on the end beat after one, what we'll do is pick the open B and G strings upwards. This rings out as an eighth note. On two, we're going to place that middle finger on the G string at the 16th fret and the third finger back on the B string at the 17th fret and play this double stop again. Notice that as we picked that open G and B strings, we took advantage of that to reposition the hand and get ready for this double stop. 
Okay, and two, we're going to pick it down and bend both notes up a full step and pitch as we do it. We're going to let that ring out as an eighth note as we release the bend on the end beat back to the natural position of those notes. And we're going to let those notes sustain out as the bend is released. And this will ring out for the rest of the measure. So what I'm going to do is give you a four count lead in and combine the sixth and seventh measures in sequence. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and a two and three, four. The eighth measure is going to be an exact repeat of the sixth measure. So let's skip ahead to the ninth measure. Just like the beginning of the seventh measure, the ninth measure will also begin with the first finger barring the G and B strings at the 14th fret. This time, this double stop will only ring out for the first 16th note of this measure. On the E beat, right after one, we're going to take the middle finger and go to the D string at the 16th fret, pick this note up. It rings out as a 16th note. On the and beat, we'll pick this note down. This time it rings out as an 8th note. And to complete the measure, we'll pick this note down a third time on two and let it ring out for the rest of the measure. So what I'm going to do now is I'll give you a four count lead in and play the eighth and ninth measures in sequence. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and the and two. Let's run through the first nine measures in sequence. One, two, three, four. And now we have reached the tenth measure. We'll begin by placing the 3rd finger on the D string at the 11th fret and the pinky on the G string at the 11th fret. We're going to play this double stop by picking it downwards on 1 and let it ring out as an 8th note. On the and beat, after 1, we're going to take the 1st finger and bar them same 2 strings at the 9th fret and pick them up. The next 2 beats are going to be a repeat of the two we just did. On two, we're going to go back to the 11th fret of those same two strings with the third and fourth fingers, pick that down, and on the end beat after two, we're going to go back to the first finger barring them same two strings to the ninth fret, and pick them up. Okay, and this will be tied to an eighth note on three. So on the end beat after three, we're going to do another eighth note, and that's with the third finger on the a string at the 11th fret, this is picked up. We'll finish the measure by going to the 9th fret with the first finger on the G string and picking that down. So with the 4 count lead in, this is what the 10th measure is going to sound like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4. And now we have reached the 11th measure. We're going to begin by placing the first finger on the A string at the 7th fret. We'll pick this note down on 1 and let it ring out as a 16th note. On E, the 16th right after that, we're going to hammer on with that third finger to the same string at the 9th fret. On the AND beat, we're going to take the first finger and go up a string in pitch on the same fret. We'll pick that note down, let it ring out as another 16th note. And on the up beat, the final 16th note of the first quarter, we're going to hammer on with the third finger to that same string at the 9th fret. The first four notes are counted one and just like this. One and yeah. out. Okay, on two, what we're going to do is we're going to go with that first finger to the G string to 6th fret and pick this down. That rings out as a 16th note. On the E beat, right after that, we'll take the middle finger and go to the D string to 7th fret and pick that up. This rings out as a 16th note. Now on the and beat after that, 
we're going to go with the pinky to the B string at the 10th fret and pick that down. This is an 8th note. And 3, we're going to go with the 1st finger to that same string at the 7th fret and pick that down. This is a quarter note. We'll finish up the measure with two eighth notes, counted four and picked down and up. The first is with the third finger on the D string at the ninth fret. That's your downbeat on four. And the and beat picked up is the first finger on that same string at the seventh fret. So with the four count lead in, this is what the eleventh measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. 20 and 2 and 3, 4 and. And now we have reached the 12th measure. We'll begin by placing the 3rd finger on the D string at the 9th fret. On 1, we're going to pick this note down and bend it up a full step and pitch as we do it. It's going to ring out as a 16th note, but we're going to hold this bend in position for about the first half of this measure. On E beat, which is the 16th note right after one, we'll pick this note up again. It rings out as a 16th note. On the and beat, we have a 16th note rest. On the up beat, the final 16th note of the first quarter, we're going to pick this note upwards again, let it ring out as a 16th note. On two, we have a 16th note rest. On the e beat after two, we'll pick this note up again, it rings out as a 16th note. On the and beat, we pick it down, it rings out as another 16th note. Now on the upbeat, the final 16th note of the second quarter, we're going to let that note sustain out as we release the bend back to the natural position of the note. So on three, we'll pick this note again and bend it up, and it's going to ring out as a half note for the rest of the measure and be tied to the first eighth note on the next measure. So with a four count lead in, this is what the twelfth measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One E, uh, E, and a three, four, one. And now we have reached the thirteenth measure. We're going to place the third finger on the D string at the ninth fret. On the and beat after one, we're going to pick this upwards and bend the note a full step and pitch as we do it. This will ring out as an eighth note. On the two beat, we're going to go with the first finger to the same string at the sixth fret. We'll pick this down and it rings out as an eighth note. On the and beat after two, we're going to go with the middle finger to the D string at the seventh fret and pick it up. Okay, this rings out as an eighth note. And on the 3 beat, we'll take the pinky and go to the A string at the ninth fret and pick this down. This is going to ring out as a half note for the rest of the measure. What I'm going to do here is give you a four count lead in and play the 12th and 13th measures in sequence just so you can see how they plug in. One, two, Three, four, one, e, uh, e, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four. Let's run through the tenth through thirteenth measures just one time, just to make sure that you understand how they fit together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And now we have reached the 14th measure. We'll begin by placing the 3rd finger on the G string at the 9th fret and the 1st finger on the B string at the 7th fret. What we're going to do here is pick this double stop down on 1 and we're going to bend the G string with that 3rd finger up a full step and pitch until this note is exactly the same as the note where the 1st finger is and the B string at the 7th fret. This is called a unison bend and it will sound like this. Okay, we're going to let that ring out for 3 eighths of that measure which is a dotted quarter note. So on the end beat after 2 we're going to shift both fingers up a full step and pitch on them same two strings 
We're going to repeat that process, but this is going to ring out for the rest of the measure. What you'll have there is an eighth note tied to a half note. And for the next measure, we're going to move both fingers up a half a step and repeat that process on one. Okay, we'll pick down, do our unison bend, and let that ring out for three-eighths of the measure. Okay, that's a dotted quarter note. And we'll finish up the 15th measure by shifting both fingers up a full step and pitch and playing one more unison bend. Okay, on the end beat after two, we'll pick that down, bend it up, and it rings out for the rest of that measure. So with a four count lead in, this is what the 14th and 15th measures are going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. And now we've reached the 16th measure. We'll begin by placing the third finger on the B string at the 17th fret. On one, what we're going to do is pick this note down and bend it up a full step and pitch as we do it. This rings out as an eighth note. On the end beat after one, we're going to pick this note up again, let it ring out as another eighth note, and notice that the string is still bent up a step and pitch as we do it. On two, we're going to pick the string downwards, will it still bend up a full step and pitch, this time it rings out as a sixteenth note. On E beat, we're going to release the band and let it sustain out as we go back to the natural position of the note. Okay, we're not picking this note, it's produced by the left hand. On the and beat, the next 16th note, we're going to pull off to the first finger on that same string at the 14th fret. Once again, we're not picking this, it sounded by left hand. And for the final 16th note of the second quarter, the a beat, we're going to go back to the third finger on that same string at the 17th fret pick it up and bend the string a step and pitch as we do it. This is what the measure sounds like so far. Okay, what I'm going to do now, because it's getting kind of awkward to count and play, is we're going to let that note sustain out through three and we're going to pick it upwards on the E beat after three. And that's actually tied to an eighth note on four. So to finish up the measure, what we're going to do is play two sixteenth notes, counted and a, and that's by going with the third finger to the high E string at the seventeenth fret. We'll pick that down. That's the and beat. And on the a beat, the final sixteenth note of the measure, we'll pull off to the first finger on that same string at the fourteenth fret. So with the four count lead in, this is what the sixteenth measure will sound like. One, two, three, four. Due to time constraints and the difficulty of trying to talk through the last two measures, here's what they will sound like slowed down a little. Most of the triplets are being played to close out the solo. These notes in their proper picking pattern will be illustrated on the third page of the tab sheet that will be displayed at the end of this segment. You should be able to follow it. Also note that when triplets are being played, it's not always possible to pick down on the down beats. Let's run through measures 14 through 18 just one time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four, one, two and three, four, 
One, two, and three, four. 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 One, two, three, four. This is all 18 measures on guitar too. What appears to be measures 2 through 3 on paper is actually measures 2 through 9. You'll notice a repeat sign at the beginning of measure 2 and a repeat sign at the end of measure 3. Also notice that what appears to be measures 4 through 5 is actually measures 10 through 17. You'll notice the same repeat signs at the beginning and ending of these measures. One, two, three, four. This is all 18 measures on the bass guitar. What appears to be measures 2 and 3 on paper is actually measures 2 through 7. You'll notice a yellow highlight at the beginning of measure 2 and at the end of measure 3. These are repeat signs. Also notice that what appears to be measures 6 and 7 on paper is actually measures 10 through 15. You'll notice the same highlights at the beginning and ending of these measures.